This is Wilson Morales from Black Family TV talking to director Menhaj Tuda regarding the film Heist 88, which stars Don, uh, it's not just all of us, said the wrong name. <laughs> this is Wilson Morales from Black. This is Wilson Morales from Black Women TV talking to Menhaj Huda regarding the film Heist 88, which stars Courtney B. Vance. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Good. This is inspired, semi based on a true story. How much is true and how much is fiction? Um, well, I think uh, there's it's true events. So there was a, um, a bank robbery that happened um, in Chicago in 1988. And, um, you know, we've taken that story and um, used it quite liberally to create a thriller set around um, the characters that we uh, felt that were would have been around at that time. <clears throat> so, yeah, so I don't know, maybe 50-50, who knows? Like, <laughs> I didn't write the story, so it's been... For anybody fact-checking, were, were, the, were the individuals Black? Yes, I think so. Yeah. Okay, just want to make sure. <laughs> yeah, I think. Um, I mean that that I think that was why uh, you know Dwayne Johnson Cochran, who's the writer, um, he was very aware of this story. He he used to be a reporter in Chicago, so he was uh, um, you know a producer and a reporter. So he was aware of this story when it actually happened in in the late eighties. So um, you know it was just uh, something that he dug up um, from that time. Um, so, yeah, and, and you know, I think, um, and I, that that was his um, kind of motivation, I think, for for pulling this story out because the characters were all black. Yeah. And when you're working with the screenwriters regarding this movie, and obviously you're condensing what happened in real life to film, uh, how much of a challenge is it for you to make sure all of the parts are connected in terms of establishing who these individuals are? why they chose to do it and how they got caught. Obviously, because we know it's a true story and they did they get caught, we kind of somewhat go in this movie thinking like, we know how it's going to end. Let's just see the build up to it. Yeah, I think uh, <clears throat> the ending, um, you know, I, I wasn't part of the development process of the project, which has been over quite a long period of time before I came on board from, but from what I, uh, have learned from Dwayne and and the producers, the other producers, is that um, you know it initially was supposed to be a much longer piece with like a, a limited series, where you delved into the lives of the characters a lot more, and and <clears throat> it was I think it was with FX and it was with HBO and then um, they finally ended up being at Paramount and they decided that actually they wanted to make it into a movie so then Dwayne had to rewrite it as a movie um and that's when once they got to the end of that process that's when I I came in so um so in 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 terms of <clears throat> just uh the timeline and how compressed it is for my you know my angle on it always was to make sure that it works as a movie and that it has the audience like really sitting on the edge of their seat um and 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 so you know what i liked about the project was the fact that they it did ha have this kind of social um commentary angle on it uh but ultimately it works as a crime thriller and 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 that's what really motivated me to make this these guys did the crime but in this film, you're looking to humanize them in terms of giving them a reason as if there's a reason for anything when there's a crime committed. You know, why take that approach? Well, I think that approach comes in because of our main character. It's like, <clears throat> you know, the, 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 the victims, if you like, the, the, the young people, um, you know, we, we were calling them kids because they were so young um, who were working at the, uh, the bank um, you know, they they had no intention of doing this. So we, you know, we have a a person that comes into their lives, <clears throat> analyzes the the opportunity, and and comes up with a a scam of how they he can pull it off, and then he convinces them to do it. Now, in that sort of dynamic um, kind of pitch, if you like, he's kind of selling it to them. He's also 
you know, that's that's what we like about this character is that he's able to convince these people of doing anything. And so that process is kind of what we <clears throat> analyze. And, and it's and it's done in a way that you feel like, you know, it could happen to any one of us. You know, if you get caught by a con man, they could convince you to do whatever you want either. So by using that kind of um, sort of system within within the, the script and the and the movie, we as the audience get to analyze the the morality of the situation, whether we would do it or not. So I think that's how I feel like it works really well. It's it's sort of a gray area, and um and and it has particular moments where you're kind of you kind of buy into it, you know, and and uh, and you know we're talking about 1988. Uh, the world was a very different place, uh, <clears throat> and. And now we can look back at it and make a comment about it in that way, in that shape, and 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 it really works. So I think that you know that's uh, that's how it, it's sort of incorporated into the movie. I, I don't think it sort of hits you over the head and says, "Hey, the, you know, this is bad or this is good, and and this is what you know." It's it's justified to do this, but um, <clears throat> but you kind of understand why these people would uh, make that choice, you know, given. So so Courtney B. Vance is not the modern day Bill Fagan, huh? <laughs> well, I mean, <clears throat> he's it's not modern day because it's 1988. You know, it's or, not, <laughs> okay, right? you know where I'm going with this. <laughs> <laughs> um, but he, he is very, very convincing. And you know, he's charming in many ways, but he's also very intimidating. And so, you know, he he rides that line really incredibly well. And um, yeah, you, you got to see his performance. I, I'm assuming you've seen the movie and um, and <laughs> you, you, could, you know what I'm talking about. But uh, yeah, he pulls that off, you know, amazingly well. Um, mm -hmm. And so, you know, when you're working, you know, what I got out of this is that you've got Courtney B. Vance, you know what he's bringing to the table. But the young actors, you know, uh, they're fairly new, at least to me, from what I've seen. Uh, which is great for them because now they're getting this exposure. People will see it because it is Courtney B. Vance. You know, hopefully this will elevate their careers. Uh, wh what did you get out of directing these in the, the young kids? Because we know, you know, Courtney doesn't need that much direction. You know, he's been working for so many years. Maybe a guidance here or there as far as, you know, where you want him to fall. Um, but, you know, how was it working with these individuals? Uh, and working in a, in a time period of 1988, you know, because you're working, because that's a character itself, the time. Well, <clears throat> fortunately for me and and the, the all of the team, I was around in 1988, and and not only that, um, I'm one of the few people who knew about the Warehouse Club in Chicago and um, and the music scene and all that being in the UK, I was very much into the house music that was arriving. So I was very tuned into like this time period and how it needed to be portrayed. And, and the fact that we have Marshall, who's a DJ, uh, you know, all of that kind of fed into um, my attachment and attraction to this particular project. Now, <clears throat> in terms of uh, working with these young people, um, you know, pretty much most of the work I've done in the UK has been around, you know, working with young people. My first feature film is about teenagers. So I'm very comfortable. My first short film and my first feature film were both about teenagers. So I'm very comfortable working with these kind of actors. And um, and what I, what I like doing really, my method, if there is one, is to really do the work in auditioning and casting and choosing the right people. Um, and once that's done, you know, I, I kind of usually put them through a really tough test when I'm auditioning. And when I feel comfortable that they can pull it off, then uh, by the time we get onto set, I, I kind of uh, give them a lot more freedom and just try and create a safe space for them to really uh, push their talents and feel comfortable to really express themselves. And that's, uh, you know, I think as soon as the, because the, the auditioning process and uh, it took place all online and with self tapes and stuff. So we never really were able to do what you normally do as a chemistry read and get people in the room together to see it. But I remember when they first all arrived <clears throat> in Chicago and we went out for dinner that first night 
I, you know, Dwayne and I just looking at these four and they were just like jelly. And we could tell that there was this chemistry between all of them that we, you know, just hit the nail on the head to, to, to bring these four together. Um, and, you know, uh, Precious is someone I'd worked with before. So I was, you know, I, I knew I was trying to see if, if I could get her into this movie. It, it wasn't a straightforward um, offer to her because she, you know, there were other people that we were chasing for a while. And then, um, thankfully for me that, that they didn't work out so I was able to present Precious and they just loved her and and we just went for it and, and it was clearly the right right choice for this mm -hmm. role yeah what's your takeaway having having directed this you've done other projects but I like to think everybody's still learning the game that skill set wise what did you get from doing this movie that when you work on your next project you can bring something that you did from here well, this is like I think this is the first time I've done a period um, like where I've I've uh, had to do uh, you know really go back to a period. I mean, luckily, like like I said, I was alive at the time, so I was very conscious of what the the visual styles would be in terms of clothing and um, vehicles and those kind of things. So I think um, that's the first time I've done something like that as as a something from whatever 30 years ago 40 years ago um and uh so you know i i would love to do more of that i mean that's for sure um in fact i have i have a project that i'm i i've just uh, started developing which is also set around the same period that be, the story begins at the same period but then it actually ends up in present day so um so yeah i mean i think but i mean you know more importantly i think this is my first uh, like crime thriller I've done since I've moved to the UK um, to the US from the UK, and I you know I hope to do a lot more of these kind of stories because it's what I love doing. You know, it's just uh, I I love these kind of stories, and um, and I think the bonus for me was that this took place in a, in a time um, where the world was very different, and so we were able to take some liberties in terms of how we present the story. I think, you know, to do this story in a present day would look and feel very, very different. Um, you know, we have, we live in a world where technology is sort of so predominant compared to what, you know, what the world was. So that was a bit of a challenge really. How do, how do you make these, you know, how do you, how do you get actors to understand that you don't have a smartphone uh, to just uh, find out all the information that you actually have to use books and, um phone books and and things to look up you have to you have a phone booth to actually put coins in to actually make phone calls um those things are, are so antiquated now that nobody actually that certainly these young young actors had no clue about them um so it was a it, it was a it was a mystery to them they've obviously seen it in movies and stuff but they've never actually held a phone to their ear like that and and put it down you know it's uh, uh all of that was uh, very interesting to see how <laughs> for them to to learn how to go back in time and, and understand how people had to live you know you got it done congratulations on this film obviously we'll promote it let people know about it because nowadays there's a lot of product out there so it's always about marketing letting people know especially when the actors can't talk as of this moment you know and promote their own project so it's up to us to let's do this so congrats again wherever you're at stay safe take care i'm sure i'll talk to you on your next project Thank Take you care. so much. You too. Bye. Mm -hmm. Bye.